Hi. Hi, Dee Dee. Okay. Can you record me because I'm going to read what I sent? Okay. Go ahead. Okay. So I just sent it, um, Mr. Jones, I'm writing to request a release from the Ramsey County Workhouse on my own recognizance. Sure that you are aware that I was convicted of six felony counts of parental deprivation, even though I only received a portion of my evidence that I have been requesting since December of 2015. The evidence I did receive was on September 1st, 2016, and jury trial was scheduled on September 26th, 2016. As I have reported numerous times before, the goal was always to have me plead guilty or be found guilty without, without ever getting all of my evidence to review in a thorough manner. The jury trial was simply trial by ambush and an obstruction of justice that has led to my wrongful imprisonment. I have intended all court hearings as scheduled, and I'm clearly not a flight risk as I have lived in the same house in St. Cloud, Minnesota for over 10 years. I'm also not at risk of contacting the, quote, victim, unquote, as indicated by Judge Asbog, as I have not done so at any time in the past. This is a state sentence as a prison, wait, this is a state sentence versus a prison commitment case, and it's only reasonable that I be released on my own recognizance. I would appreciate your immediate attention to this matter. And then I just cc'd Kina and Asbog. Okay. Hi. Hello. Hi. I'm going to read you my letter, and then I'm going, because I'm only out for 20 more minutes. Okay. Okay. Ready? Yep, go. On 10-12-2016, I submitted a kite to Ramsey County Sheriff's Lieutenant Norby. In the kite, I requested that my readily available free electronic jail data, meal, clothing, library access, phone data, discipline data, etc., be mailed to my home address. Instead of being kind, courteous, and helpful by forwarding my administratively simple data request to Ram Ramsey County's technically qualified responsible authority as required under the statute, Lieutenant Norby was passive-aggressive, coercive, harassing, and intimidating. Lieutenant Norby confronted me over my data request and asked me, what is this, regarding the kite I had submitted. The encounter was clearly coercive from the beginning due to the show of authority. During the coercive encounter, Lieutenant Norby did not hand me, in parentheses, prisoner D.D. Ebbable, a free copy of the Ramsey County Data Practice Manual. Instead, Lieutenant Norby made the outrageous claim that I had to do her job and contact Ramsey County's administratively and technically qualified responsible authority. Lieutenant Norby was essentially telling me to go to hell. I have a reasonable, reasonable suspicion that as a condition of Ramsey County employment, all Ramsey County employees are required to sign a statement of receipt acknowledging that they have received a copy or have been provided access to the Ramsey County Data Practice Policy Manual and understand that they are to read are to read and become familiar with its content. I am aware that Lieutenant Norby's peace officer model policy for licensure states that no police, no peace officer shall ridicule, mock, deride, taunt, belittle, willfully embarrass, humiliate, or shame any person to do anything reasonably calculated to incite a person to violence. It is a matter of public record that I am a victim of ma malicious prosecution. It's also a matter of the public record that I was falsely convicted in a trial by ambush show trial. I have reason to suspect that Dakota County Attorneys James Backstrom, Philip Prokopowitz, and Catherine Kena are conspiring with Ramsey County Sheriff Lieutenant Norby to retaliate against me for exposing their obstruction of justice. I will notify my husband and have him contact the Department of Corrections to report this course of retaliation plot. D.D. Abbeville, case number 19HA-CR-15-4227. Okay. Hi. Hi, D.D. You ready? Yeah, I'm ready. Okay. October 17, 2016, letter to Brian Jones, District Court Administrator, regarding rigged case number 19HACR154227. Mr. Jones, I have a reasonable suspicion that you and corrupt First Judicial District Chief Judge Terrence Conkle were having a laugh after you maliciously tossed me in jail 
following the show trial in rigged case 19HACR154227, right? I also have a reasonable suspicion that you and corrupt First Judicial District Chief Judge Terrence Conkle weren't laughing when my 10 6, 2016 demand letter. Okay, shit. Just keep on reading it. Okay. Um, weren't laughing when my 10 6, 2016 demand to be released on my own recognizance letter showed up in your mailbox. Just like you were hoping to force me to plead guilty without ever receiving all of my readily available free electronic criminal investigative data. You were hoping that you had broken my will after you maliciously imprisoned me following the trial by ambush, weren't you? And according to my calculations, in the very near future, I may be receiving three unclaimed certified letters from you, corrupt Hastings Police Chief Brian Schaefer, and corrupt Gary Hurd of the Corrupt Lawyers Professional Responsibility Board, shouldn't I? You didn't actually think that I would trust you and your corrupt cronies to sign for my second criminal complaint against corrupt Dakota County attorneys James Backstrom, Philip Prokopowitz, and Catherine Keena, did you? This week, corrupt Lakeville Lake Mayor Matt Little, who lives in Farmington, right, found out the hard way that the Internet is where his unclaimed certified letter from me ended up, didn't he? What does that mean for you and your fellow corrupt cronies? Hmm? That means that from jail, I can use the truth to not only completely destroy your blackened reputation, but I can use the truth to completely destroy corrupt Chief Judge Terrence Conkle's black blackened reputation, the blackened reputation of the corrupt Hastings PD, and last but not least, the blackened reputation of the corrupt lawyers' professional responsibility board. Because if you think that malicious imprisonment will keep me from exposing your rigged courts, then you're sadly mistaken, aren't you? Oh, and isn't it written in Proverbs 21, verse 22, that a wise man scaleth the city of the mighty and casteth down the strength of confidence therein? D.D. Evavold, C.C., Judge Karen Aspa, 1st Judicial District, and K Catherine Keena, Dakota County Attorney's Office. Okay, sounds good. All right. Well, I'm going to ask you a few questions here about your uh, trial there. You have repeatedly asked for your preliminary audio statements for the witnesses that they called at your trial, correct? Correct. Okay, did you ever receive them? No, I did not. Okay, but you brought that up repeatedly at your trial, correct? Yes, I did. Okay. Um, you are aware that Mayor Matt Little is an attorney, correct? Yes, I am. Okay. And you have contacted him along with uh, Lakeville Chief of Police, Jeff Long, and Deputy Chief of Police, John Corman, correct? Correct. Okay. And it was about the evidence that was being illegally withheld from you, correct? Yes. Okay. And uh, when you contacted both or all three, uh, Little, Long, and Corman, uh, they all hung up the phone on you, didn't they? Yes, they did. Okay. So you have a reasonable suspicion that they knew by illegal withholding your uh, your uh, preliminary audio statements that you would get convicted, correct? Correct. Okay. So do you feel that uh, they intentionally wanted you to be uh, convicted? Clearly. Okay. That was the plan. Okay. All right. That's what I need. Uh, I need to run through those questions again uh, that we went through yesterday because I am over the time limit for the video. Okay. So I'm going to, okay. we have to be quick on this. I, I think that was m part of my problem. I didn't have it written down. It's just off the top of my head. Okay. So <clears throat> I'm going to run through the questions here. You repeatedly asked dur during your trial for the preliminary audio statements for the witnesses that were called at your trial, correct? Correct. Did you ever receive them? No, I did not. When you contacted Lakeville Mayor Matt Little, who happens to be an attorney, Lakeville Deputy Police Chief John Corman and Police Chief Jeff Long, they all hung up the phone on you, correct? Correct. You have a reasonable suspicion that Little, Long, and Corman knew that you'd be convicted without the preliminary audio statements, correct? Absolutely. Do you have a reasonable suspicion that Little, Long, and Corman's plan was to either force you to plead guilty or to be found guilty without ever receiving your evidence? Yes. Okay. Hopefully that makes the time limit there. So. Okay. Hi. Hello. I'm going to read you this. Ready? Yep. 
Monday, October 24th, 2016, regarding grievance submitted by Dede Abbevald, to whom it may concern, I'm writing this grievance as I have a reasonable suspicion that I am being targeted for retaliation by Ramsey County Sheriff Matt Braz Bostrom yes. for daring to file a legitimate grievance against Lieutenant Norby. I also have reason to suspect that Sheriff Bostrom is trying to incite prisoner violence against me. I've heard through the jail grapevine that the reason for unit, the unit lockdown was because of a PREA complaint, racial tension, and because of the legitimate complaint I filed against Lieutenant Norby. This action put me in a dangerous position due to the retaliatory collective punishment, which was designed to indir indirectly incite violence against prisoners who dare to file legitimate grievances. It would also appear that the retaliatory collective punishment schedule that was allegedly permanent came to a sudden and abrupt halt when the news of the prisoner abuse hit social media. The collective punishment lockdowns that began on October, two, October 13, 2016, magically and mysteriously ended on October 18, 2016. The retaliatory collective punishment ended without Ramsey County Sheriff Matt Bostrom issuing an apology or debunking the malicious prison gossip. I have documented other retaliation that will be, will be addressed in a future grievance. I will again notify my husband and have him contact the proper authorities of this coercive retaliation plot. Signed, Didi Eppold. Didi Eppold. Okay. You may begin speaking now. Hi. Hello. Hi. I'm oh. going to read you this so I can get it in the mail. Okay. Ready? Yeah, I'm ready. November 1st, 2016, Brian Jones, 1st Judicial District Court Administrator. I was recently made aware that Tim Kinley has requested to film my sentencing hearing for case number 19HACR154227. I have absolutely no objections to Kinley filming my sentencing as it's imperative that accurate information is available to the public. I believe if my trial by ambush had been filmed from day one, the obstruction of justice would not have been able to take place. I do have a reasonable sub sub suspicion that either you, Dakota County Attorney James Backstrom, or Judge Karen Asbog will come up with some arbitrary reason to stop Kinley from filming. Again, I have no objections to Kinley filming and, in fact, actually welcome it to protect me from further retaliation and malici malicious prosecution. D.D. Eppavold, carbon copies to J Judge Karen Asbog and Catherine Kena. Sounds good. Okay. Hi. Hello. Hi. Speak up. Okay, I just met with Keith for the last one, and she said, no, Bostrom is not involved whatsoever because he is the Ramsey County Sheriff's Department. RCCF is under Ramsey County Community Corrections. I don't care. He's still the sheriff. No, that's what she told I, me. I don't care what she says. Well, I do because I have to keep seeing her. So. <laughs> is he the sheriff or isn't he? Well, he is. That's what I said. He's the elected official. That's right. That, so that ends the question right there. Right. All right. Okay. So as long as you buy into their retarded nonsense, they're just going to run you around. See? Uh, again, it was written clearly in the grievance. If you are abusing the grievance process, they have a right to uh, punish you. Have they punished you? Not yet. I haven't handed this one in yet. <laughs> well, again, I don't care what they say. The, the point is, if they do anything to you, we're going to file a grievance. All right. Did you get everything you needed today now? Well, I need you to read the grievance to me. <laughs> and then I'll have pretty much everything I need. Then I'll tell you what all sorts of wonderful things have happened. Okay, ready? Yes, I'm ready. Okay, November 3rd, 2016 regarding grievance data requests. I did a written request for my private jail data on 10-12-2016. On 10-26-2016, Liz Keats indicated that Captain Belfield stated that I would have to make specific requests for further data. During my pre-booking screening at the Ramsey County Prison, I was screened to ensure that I was medically acceptable for admission and that all arrest or commitment paper was allegedly present to qualify me for booking. The required data, the required data collected included information on my religious practices, 
diet, clothing, appearance, mental status, etc. Ramsey County Sheriff Matt Bostrom is required to collect and preserve this data so he can make the claim that he so he can't make the claim that he didn't know he was harassing me. Ramsey County Sheriff Matt Bostrom is also required to give me this readily available free electronic private jail data upon my request. And since I am the subject of the data, Sheriff Bostrom can only charge me the actual cost of the DVD, two cents, and the cost of mailing the data to my home address. File sharing is a simple administrative procedure, just like mailing my electronic jail data to my residence. First, Ramsey County's Lieutenant Norby harassed me over my reasonable data request, and then when I filed a legitimate grievance to document the harassment and humiliation, I was privately harassed by Captain Belfield through Liz Keats. I have a reasonable suspicion that Ramsey County Sheriff Matt Bostrom has ordered Liz Keats, Women's Unit Coordinator, and Captain Belfield to harass, intimidate, and discredit me. These tactics are variations of the theme of Lieutenant Norby's tactics. Instead of Lieutenant Norby harassing, coercing, and shaming me, I'm harassed by the CO calling me to Keats's office. The impression that Bostrom wants to implant in the minds of fellow prisoners is that I'm either a disobedient student, being repeatedly called to the principal's office, or that I'm an informant. Either malicious impression endangers my safety and security. I've been told that Bostrom isn't in charge of RCCF, and apparently I wouldn't know that Liz Keats's authority is delegated, delegated to her by official Bostrom. It would appear that I do know what I'm talking about since I received a, quote, civics lesson, unquote, instead of charges for abusing the grievance process. My intelligence is also insulted by Captain Belfield's claims that I have to be more specific for my jail data request. I will gladly sit down and expect all of my electronic data that Sheriff Bostrom has collected. I'm sure that the notes I take will be an invaluable resource when I make my complaint to the Minnesota DOC. I demand that Ramsey County Sheriff Matt Bostrom immediately order his Ramsey County personnel to end the retaliation campaign that he has directed against me. I also want all readily available free electronic private jail data from my booking date up to and including today's date to be immediately mailed to my home address. Dee Dee Evabolt.